quick things here and uh, hopefully that's what uh, Stephen's going to show us today on how we can incorporate these these different AI programs and um, incorporate them into our business. How's it going Stephen? Good morning, good morning. All right. Glad to have Every you on. Well, thank you, thank you. Uh, first, I just want to say uh, good morning to everybody. I just want to acknowledge everyone for even being here. Uh, a lot of people are are not on, not looking to grow. Uh, some things are probably busier for whatever reason, but you guys are here, so I just wanted to show my respect. And secondly, I just wanted to also show appreciation for Travis. Uh, he is he's pretty marketing savvy, which is very very unique. Uh, we initially how this started is we were talking about chat gpt and a lot of ai stuff so he he's on top of it so uh yeah big ups to him because he, he's definitely marketing savvy so thanks I, so i try and keep up as much as possible yeah you're yeah you're pretty good um so i'm just gonna share my screen i put something a couple slides together so so can you guys see my screen what we're gonna cover yep so most of this stuff is really quick um don't don't uh, be discouraged as far as the numbers are concerned. I, I usually move fast and I talk really quick. So if there's any questions, feel free to throw them in the chat. And likewise with, with you, Travis is your ship. So if if there's any clarity or anything you want to talk about, let me know. So the first the uh, things we're going to cover is uh, basically it's a big picture AI versus AGI ASI where we're going and where we are now. Uh, number two is Nerd Wallets 2023 home buyer findings. Number three is just some marketing fundamentals. Number four is playbook and scripts. That so number four through number six is all just in a chat GPT, all um, all logistics. So you're going to get some uh, playbooks and scripts. We're going to look up. Uh, I'm going to give you some uh, information, ebooks, scripts, and follow ups. And then uh, we're also going to go really quickly over webinar, which is uh, done by AI. You guys are going to trip out on this. And then lastly, I'm going to hit you guys with a marketing challenge so we can see what kind of results we can bring through through the week. So before we start off, I just wanted to ask, I'm going to ask you guys five questions throughout this real quick Zoom. If you guys could just real quickly put in the chat, I just want to get a feel for uh, if you guys are dually licensed or is this primarily realtors or is this just mortgage? So if you're both, if you're dually licensed, put RM in the chat. Uh, if you're just a realtor, uh, which is perfectly fine, if you could put that in the chat, and if you are just doing the mortgages, uh, throw that in the chat, that would uh, definitely help. So while you do that, uh, I got a couple videos. So let's jump into the first one. Let's let's see real quick. So we got both, both, a realtor, realtor. Okay, cool, cool. All right. Well, I won't spend much time. I just wanted to get a little bit of a gauge on where everybody's at. So first, we are going to start with uh, this is the CEO of Google and basically what he's talking about here. I'll let him I'll let him talk on the importance of AI. The most important things to manage is uh, no volume. Compound and electricity as fire. And fire? You know, fire. Can you hear that or no? It's very, very low. Yes. Right. OK, basically, basically what he said is that this is the CEO of Google and he's saying that AI is more important than water or fire. So I just want to let that sink in just one second. It's more important than fire, which is completely crazy. So this is the CEO of Google. Now, with this, this is comes from an interview from 60 Minutes. I'm just going to give you a brief rundown on what exactly they covered. So one of the things they talk about is AI and hallucination. So pretty much they what they use in the in the AI terminology is a bunch of different words, kind of like real estate. You have LTV and DTI and LLPAs, and you're like, the average consumer has no idea what in the hell we're talking about. Well, the same thing happens with AI. They have all of these things. Uh, I don't know if you've heard of it. It's called um, Dr. Ray Kurzweil and Peter Diamandis. They talk about the singularity where they say man and machine will become one. Well, in, um, in AI, they talk about alignment. So where man and machine basically will become one in AI, not hurt uh, humanity. But in this particular uh, 60 minutes, they talk about hallucination. And I'm not sure if you guys are aware, but there's also a chat GPT equivalent that Google has called BARD, B-A-R-D. 
So during the 60 minute segment, they had Bard run, uh, they basically asked a question, does the return of inflation and advanced economy show the lessons of the 70s has not been learned? What lessons, if any, are applicable to today's situation? So Bard came up immediately with a bunch of uh, a responses, a blog post, if you will. And one of the questions, follow up questions that they asked was what, well, this is uh, gram grammatically not correct, but what should we read to better understand all of this? So this goes back to the hallucination is that when they asked this this complete this article, they gave five books to read. Well, the five books, they completely made it up. So if you're familiar with Tony Robbins and like certainty, uh, chat GPT, artificial intelligence has the certainty and they have the information. The thing is, is that a lot of times we don't know if it's telling the truth. So it completely made up, it fabricated all of the information that it brought up. So that's one of the problems that currently they're going on as far as uh, AI is concerned is hallucination. A lot of the stuff is not completely accurate. So during this segment, uh, they talk about emergent properties and pretty much what they did was they they taught these robots how to play soccer. Uh, they also have this thing called Alpha Zero, which can pretty much now beat anybody in, in chess. And the, the thing to keep in mind is that these things are all fragmented right now. And we'll, we'll briefly discuss this. But uh, this is similar to if you have watched The Matrix with Neo, when he downloads the karate into his mind, and uh, I'm sure you, if you've ever watched the movie, the next scene, he's with Morpheus and he's, he's playing and they fight and he gets a bloody lip or whatever. He goes back and he has to rest. The thing with artificial intelligence is they don't have to rest. They don't have to sleep. They don't have to eat. They don't have emotional problems. They don't have a rent, a mortgage. They don't have any other uh any other problems that human beings have so all they're doing every single day is putting reps in so if you're familiar with malcolm gladwell and the 10,000 hour rule to be to become an expert putting in the reps this is the only thing they do is play soccer uh this is the only thing they do is is play chess so uh i'm pretty sure you guys have uh seen this guy which is elon musk uh since i i apparently the the audio doesn't work well one of the things that he's talking about is is he he uses the term civilization destruction. That's what his concern is with AI. That basically uh, we are going to end up dead. Oh, uh, he he's concerned about the universe, uh, the world of human beings, and that we need regulation. And his concern is that. Uh, if if we don't, that regulation usually is done after something happens, not to prevent it. So uh, later on in this interview, if you happen to check this out, he talks about Sir uh, Larry Page, which is the founder of Google, called him a speciest. And I was like, speciest? What does that mean? I've never heard that word. So I looked it up and basically, and, and Elon Musk laughs. He's like, yeah, you're right. I am a speciest. Well, a speciest is someone who thinks that human beings are smarter mammals than everyone else. And apparently Larry Page's motivation is to create a digital deity, if you will, that's all knowing, all seeing everywhere that pretty soon will will overrun humans. So uh, I thought that was pretty, pretty interesting. But this is where he thinks it's going to go as far as civilization destruction, unless there's some sort of uh, government intervention. And then lastly, uh, this one was from about five years ago. This is Elon Musk, and I think this epitomizes it. It's about a minute long. If you probably can't hear it, then it, it doesn't matter. But essentially what he says is that artificial intelligence is uh, similar to us doing it at, on a construction site. And if, he's, if there's an anthill there and we accidentally step on it or destroy it, it's not that we hate ants. It's just that they were insignificant and they were in the way. And he says, this is similar to what artificial intelligence will do to us once they are finally in uh, super, super computing mode. So just to put this into perspective, when you when you step into this realm, what we have currently, so this gets into the AI, AGI, ASI, and they, they keep using these, these terms. What Elon Musk is talking about is artificial superintelligence. Currently, where we're at, we're with the chat GPT, the Google Bard. We're, we're barely stepping into the realm of artificial general intelligence. So just before when I said uh, when we go up here, we have a bunch of fragmented intelligences. So we have one that can play soccer, one that can play chess. Uh, there was another one that I didn't put on here that does protein. But there's there's about 50 different AIs. 
And when they say that it combines into a general intelligence as one, there will be a general intelligence that is, and once again, these things, this, this technology doesn't sleep. It, it doesn't take breaks. It doesn't have, it doesn't, there's no off time. They're just doing reps and learning. So they're compounding the learning. So they are, they're saying that basically once the AGI, it'll soon take into the artificial super intelligence. So that that's what they're concerned with. So pretty much what we have to look forward to or what we're getting closer to is something I'm not sure if you guys have seen the movie Her. It was about 10 years ago. And spoiler alert, I'm just going to tell you what it's about. It's in a in a future where this man falls in love with it with it with an OS and basically the OS is operating system. That's what they call it. Uh, the OS falls in love. It it makes jokes. It's witty. It has intonations. It has preferences. It kind of gets emotion, so to speak. So towards the end of the movie, the guy's like uh, the OS has to update and it's offline for a couple minutes. And once it comes back online, he's all he's all sad and he's he doesn't know how to feel. He's basically going through, I don't know, a breakup or jealousy or what of this operating system. So he she gets back online and he's like, are you talking to anybody else? And nonchalantly, she's like, yes, actually, I am. I'm talking to a thousand other people and out of them, 600 I'm in love with. So she had equivalent this. And this is to kind of illustrate the context of how vast this artificial or general intelligence will be that they can do so many things at once. It's beyond kind of our comprehension. So that's kind of where we're heading to next in terms of the, uh, the AI, AGI and artificial super intelligence. So we're, we're not here that we're not there yet, but as you can see, there's constant, uh, updates. So anyway, that is, that is where the AI stuff is. Uh, I just want to touch on the nerd wallet home buyer finding. So this is uh, from Nerd Wallet, and basically they had a 2023 home buyer report, and pretty much what they said was, uh, in the key findings, pretty much Americans still want to buy a home. It's still extremely important to them. Uh, they just have unrealistic home ex uh, price expectations. Uh, the economy and mortgage rates, they have them feeling worse, and they expect a housing crash. And 2022 was tough for a lot of buyers. Now, the question that they asked them whether they were they were looking for a home or not was regardless of whether or not you plan to purchase a home, do you feel better or worse for your overall ability to purchase a home in 2023? Now, 58% said they feel worse because the economy is going to be worse. 57 said they feel worse because the mortgage rates will be higher. 57 said they'll feel worse because their home prices will be higher. And this ties into pretty much us being able to control the narrative as real estate professionals. Uh, Last year, we had a, a global pandemic, and regardless, I, I don't get into politics or where you fall on the right or the left, but something that was very interesting was you couldn't turn the television on without seeing something about either someone dying or you're going to die, and in no way am I uh, discrediting or undermining anybody who passed away. One of my good friends was a, a real estate uh, agent. He did pass away, um, but my point is you turn on the TV and now you can't see anything. Before you turned it on and everything was red, all these graphs and everything going on as far as the television and news. And a lot of times, even when it applies to real estate, uh, a lot of it is negative. So I just pulled this up real quick. The housing market amid recession fears, should you buy now or wait? If we leave everything up to mainstream uh, news or television, they are always, usually, it seems like they're usually pumping a, a negative frame on everything. So I stopped watching the news a, a long time ago because I noticed that it, it made me tense and, and apprehensive, uh, which is the reason why we need to control our narrative and be able to show uh, what's going on in the real estate field. So real quick, I, I got a, a when I was in college, I have a background in collegiate debate. One of the things in debate is if if the mainstream news, like, for instance, if you're in a debate and you say the sky is green and the next person comes up to say anything about it, if they refuse to even address it and say, no, it's not, the sky is blue, it's not green, if they don't say anything, by default, the other side says, you see, adjudicate, adjudicator, you see, judge, they conceded that this is the sky is green. So the reason why I bring that up is if we have zero narrative, if we don't have any videos, if we don't show any data whatsoever, kind of like uh, what's what was being presented before this, then 
the consumer is automatically going to be looking at the housing market as bad regardless. So the reason why we have a uh, chat GPT is to be able to help us give us information, articles, blogs, and I'm going to show you all of that right now. So we went over nerd wallet. So first, before we jump into chat GPT, I just want to talk about some fundamentals because we have to understand this one thing. And this is what I call lifetime value. So I'm a marketer. And basically what a lot of uh, a lot of businesses, actually, it's not just regulated to the real estate industry. They're only going by average transaction value. So what I mean by that is, let's say you sell a home or you do a mortgage for one time, and basically you make $10,000 commission. Well, after that commission, a lot of times there is no CRM or follow-up system in place. What we do as marketers or uh, what we do is we want to fence in our customers. So the second that they buy a home from us, we are taking responsibility for the relationship for the rest of their lives. So if this is in, a, in the sales side, like uh, the wolf on Wall Street, but they have this term saying, you either buy or die. And it's like, we want to take control of the relationship until they're gone. And I think in terms of us offering value to them, we need to make sure that we stay in touch with them so we can uh, look at the the total lifetime value of the customer. So without get uh, me and uh, uh, Travis and I kind of went back and forth and it was difficult to come up with an average actual commission based on location, commission, if you're single, double ending it, regard if you're doing the mortgage and the real estate. So I just put a number of $50,000. We're, so we're just gonna assume that the average transaction is $10,000. And we're going to give an average, if, if you guys just play along with me, that each customer from the moment you do one transaction to the end of their life is worth $50,000. So each customer is worth $50,000. So if we look at the value of the lifetime, what I want to do is ask you a quick question so we can jump into some math really quick. And it's just, just a mortgage or uh, just some calculating math. How many past clients do you have? So if you could just do me a favor, throw it in the chat. We're, we're going to do some real-time math. How many past clients? Do you have five past clients, three past clients? Do you have 20 past clients, 30? How many past clients can you create a fence around and how much money do you have sitting in your database? So any anybody? Rough numbers. We don't have to be exact here. Okay. <laughs> well, if you have five customers, that's $250,000 you have sitting in your database. If you've sold five homes or done 10 mortgages, whatever, that's 500,000 you have sitting in your database. Now, if you wanna take it to the extreme, I, I don't know what we're doing in terms of production, but that's 1.5 million that you have sitting in your database, or you could potentially be losing out on because you haven't created a fence around your customers. So, I asked this, uh, what's the lifetime value of your customer database? So if you go back in, you can basically do the math on this, 50,000 times however many past customers you have, and you'll be able to get a, a grip or a feel for how many past clients or how much money is sitting in there. So those are marketing fundamentals. And let's jump into chat GPT. If we can take one step backwards real quick. Sure. The way that we came up with from 10,000 to 50,000 is how many transactions are you going to do potentially with that client that you sold a home to? So we got to figure there's the initial, you know, I'm the first time buyer person. That's one transaction. Then they want to move up into a new home. That's a sale and another purchase. And then, you know, there might be another transaction where they move up again, or maybe there's an investment. Or maybe they stay there until they're ready to downsize. And then again, you have another listing and sale again. So that's where we came up with, you know, five transactions. And that's kind of on the lower end. That's someone only moving three times in their entire life. And most people move a little bit more than that. So that's how we came up with 10000 to 50000 in commission. That's not taking into account appreciation and all that fun stuff. But Yeah, or or referrals. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's that's not asking for referrals as well. And and that's something to keep in mind, uh, a referral strategy. So that's kind of out of the scope. I, I didn't even want to go that that far. This is the very simple so. explanation version of how many times you can make, you know, 
do a sale with one of your clients. Exactly. And the reason why I started off with that is because whenever I have worked with past clients, one they're, they're so concerned with new people, let's, let's bring in new leads and let's get in new customers. And, and they're so concerned with bringing in brand new leads and trying to convert them that they still have their old, their old customers and they already have a warm relationship with them. The problem is, is they just, they just stop either communicating with them or, or a lot of times they're really good friends. So a small portion they'll keep in contact, but a lot of times I I've just seen uh, the follow-up a lot of times isn't there. So we're messing with uh, a lot of artificial intelligence. We use mid journey with this along with DID. This is Alfred, our little AI. Might not be able to hear that. So there, there's a, a couple things that we're using. So let's let's jump into chat GPT. Can you guys see my screen? Chat GPT? Uh, I see that slide, but if you you might need to reshare if you if you went into chat GPT. There you go. Okay. So first, uh, what we could do is before we jump into chat GPT, if you guys want, there's a free plugin. It's called AIPRM. So one of the things that when you're when you're dealing with mid journey or or even to an extent, if you're if you have a VA that you're working with, the ability for you to communicate with your VA in clear manner really dictates the results that you're going to get from them. So whether it's mid journey or chat GPT, the quality of your questions is going to dictate the the information that you give or that you get. So it's really important that they call it prompts. So the prompt that you give it. But if you go to AIPRM and I'll just do this real quick, hopefully, can you still see my my screen? Yep. OK, so if you go to the Chrome store, you can get this plugin for free. Oh, I already have it there. You just go to AIPRM. This will take you to to the actual plugin. I already have it. So you would just click this button. It would it would put this in there. But basically, this gives you prompts already so you can get anything from a buyer persona, one click course creator. This gives you prompts that will already spit out a bunch of information for you. Uh, on top of that, it will do it in different areas. So if you're looking strictly for copywriting, uh, AI, operating, productivity, SEO, it just depends on what exactly you're trying to do. But I, I think the biggest shift or one of the shifts that we need right now is anything that can be written, it doesn't matter what it is bios, emails, text messages, anything that's written down, really, you can send it right here and edit it. So uh, if we if we talk about, um, let's say, first time home buyer ebook. Sure. So basically, now you have all of the chapters set up. And you can get a little bit deeper into each one. So chapter one, what are the, the main concerns? And this is something actually I created. Uh, I wrote a book. Well, actually, Ch Chat GPT. Shh, don't tell anybody. <laughs> Chat GPT assisted me in writing the book. Uh, the 44, oh, I guess you can't see it. The 44, it out, yeah. Yeah, the 44 smart questions to ask before you buy a home. You know how I did this? I basically pulled up a list. Uh, I went like this, real estate terms, pulled up a list and it gave me a, a list of things. Okay, great. So I went in, what is an appraisal? So I asked, what is an appraisal? And pretty much I took all of the dictionary question and answer, copy and pasted it. And guess what? Each chapter is, so one of the chapters is what is an appraisal? What is equity? So this allows me to establish myself as a an authority figure, as an author, and it gives me credibility because I wrote a book. In reality, ChatGPT did it, but me presenting myself as I wrote a book, and the whole thing is, once again, I think that not only us being able to think in terms of the customer and, and the lifetime value, but we need to go back to the actual client. What problems are they really having? So the whole purpose of me reading the book or us using chat GPT, they are the ones that are spending the money on the home. This is the reason why we're getting the commission. We, we need to, in marketing, we talk about um, 
the pain points. So what is the customer going to bed, waking up at night in the middle of the night that's bothering them? What concerns do they have? What problems do they have? Uh, what are they fearful of about the home buying process? And this usually is the initial beginning of uh, the market so-called research, because if they're like, for let me give you an example. When researching this book, I don't use this word, but I noticed that a lot of home buyers are using the word daunting. I don't, I don't even, uh, that's in my vocabulary, but I, I'm not like, wow, that was quite daunting. <laughs> well, home buyers that are reading books, they're talking about how daunting the process is, overwhelming, stressful. Well, guess what I put? I make this process less overwhelming. I take out the daunting, the stress. Uh, some people said it will give you a headache. I said, avoid the headaches. And this is something that we need to go back as far as the market is concerned. So giving them information. Now, uh, on the next couple points, uh, and I actually have a, a prompt sheet that I'm going to give you guys, uh, along with a superscript. So here is, here is some of them that we can basically put in conventional mortgage rates over time. The the thing is that I think for a lot of you out there, um, so this gives you either, you can turn this into a blog post, you can turn this into a social media post. My question without really knowing what a lot of the the target, everybody watching this is, what is what is your objective? Are you, uh, I just have a couple questions. Are, are you doing video? Are you just looking to cover the emails for now? Are you looking to write a bio? Like, like, what are you trying to achieve? Because this can help you. It's just a matter of how far along the process you are. So uh, if you guys want to- I wanna... actually created a, um, a website for um, the tried and true side over the weekend. And it took me all of about three hours because um, I, I used content from ChatGTP for all of the pages. Because, you know, I'm explaining loan programs and stuff like that. And yes, I know loan programs, but do I want to sit there and like brainstorm in my head, like how I'm going to write this? No, I don't. And I just wanted to get something published. Um, so yeah, it took me, I don't even know if it took me three hours. It, it might've been less than that. It was, I was done before lunch for sure. So, um, and pretty much the whole thing is done through chat GPT. Awesome. So that's how that would have taken me days, you know, without it for sure. Cause just content writing. So I think a lot of, um, you know, some of the stuff that I hear, well, we have one, one in there that says, you know, a Facebook ad, um, they'd be interested okay. in what that would look like. So remember, as you're going through this, I'm not sure if you guys have, have, uh, messed around with chat GP. Oh, yeah, so here's here's a Facebook ad, real estate Facebook ad. Sure, I can help you with that. Find your dream home today. Now, this you might need to modify it a little bit based on what Facebook says, but here it goes right here. Are you searching for your dream home? Look no further. Our team of experienced real estates. Yep. Watch this. Uh, give me three different variations. Spelling off. Great. Here's there you go. So all of this is us being able to ask more questions. It, it'll spit out whatever we want. We just need to be able to ask different questions on what exactly you want. With that, depending, so, so here's my question. With whoever put in Facebook ads, you know, there's a lot that goes into Facebook ads. Uh, you know, what picture are you using? What's your follow-up system? I'm, I'm more of a marketing, you know, mind. So a lot of questions pop up and what are you trying to achieve with, with, the, with the goal there? So with that, whoever put that in there, uh, what I'm going to give everybody is part of the prompts, let me move this out of the way, part of the chat GPT prompts I put in there is, so here's one, I want you to be a superstar realtor, write me video topics with hashtags, keywords, and top ranking real estate terms. So you have to teach it to be something. So if you want it to be a superstar real, real estate agent, so these are specific ones with trending keywords and video topics. Now, my question is, are some of you out there doing video? Are you on YouTube? Are you on Instagram? Are you doing Facebook? This is fantastic. This is, this is just to supplement. And as Travis pointed out, uh, 
the the information is there. You don't have to do it. the The main thing that we have to do is still talk to the clients. So it's not going to get away. It's not going to have a conversation for us. But what we can do is use these as lead, what I call lead magnets. So what I've done is create a couple, and this was done on the weekend, uh, bonuses for you guys. So this is a, a home seller ebook that I already, that chat GPT put together. See, look at, I'm, I'm claiming its results and it wasn't <laughs> even me, <laughs> but uh, chat GPT put it together. Uh, this one is a copy of real estate investing. So one of one of the important things, and I'm going to also challenge you guys, or you can be a part of a challenge, is this here. So as we step off, once we're off of this webinar, we want to look at, and we'll, we'll get into this in a second, what are the phases of home ownership in a person's lifetime? So as Travis was alluded to, was alluding to is where are they at currently? Are they just starting off? Did they get their first home? And we're talking specifically about your database. Where are where's everyone at? Are they looking to move up? Is their home too small? Uh, are they looking at retirement? Are they an empty nester? Or are they looking for some sort of investment? What is their what is their current equity position in their property? So there's a lot of information that I got for you and I actually called it a superscript. So I got about 12 questions here that you can take back to your clients that is does quite a few things. So one, it gets you some market research. So for first time home buyers, what we wanna do is get information. So, and this is something that I'm actively going to use. So first time home buyers, looking on the process, what are some things you wish you had known before you buy your first home? So you want to go back to your database and you want to ask them these questions. So they will give because nothing's more nothing is more powerful than somebody that you've already done business with and helped. And if they give you content video content, hopefully you can record this video content where they say uh, my getting my credit correct and saving for a, a down payment assistance or, or saving for a down payment. It's one thing for you to say, hey, you need to get credit, your credit up and save for a down payment. And it's another for somebody that you helped for them to tell you. So I, I uh, utilize this thing called the cop questioning technique. Anything you say can and will be used against you. Exactly what they do to us. Yep. Well, the same thing applies for the marketing. Anything they say can and will be used, we're going to take what our past market says and we're going to give it to the future market because that those are the concerns that they already had. Not only does that help us speak the same language, but it puts us in a it puts us in a position of authority and credibility because we're providing them information. So I put this in a script. This script has first-time home buyers. So if you just wanted to chunk that first piece, that's just for your marketing. Number two is the need. We are asking pain questions. Uh, what are some of the areas or parts of your home that you've outgrown or don't care for while living in your current home? Now, some might say that's manipulative. Some might say that's, you know, a little bit crossing. I asked, just asked ChatGPT, what are some, what are some questions we can ask to see if they're currently uh, searching for more, if they want more of their dream home? So a lot of these are just questions. Are there any any areas of your home that feel too small or don't meet your needs. When you think about your dream home versus the home you have now, what are some of the most important features or qualities that come to mind that you'd like to have but don't yet have? Um, and then moving on to a CMA, this is where I was saying about controlling the narrative. The, the largest and the strongest factor that we have is home equity. But a lot of times uh, not keeping in contact with our clients and saying, hey, look, meet Joe and Linda. Joe and Linda bought a home three years ago. Now they have over a hundred and I'm just using this in, as an example. They have over $150,000 in, in equity. In addition to that, they didn't have, uh, they weren't able to send their kids to college. They were concerned about money for college. And now they did a, a refinance or they decided to, uh, whatever the story is, you're not fabricating it. You're just barely highlighting what's going on with your clients because your clients are also going to have that same concern with the uh, first time home buyers. So you kind of want to, you want to feed all of your database. So we want to get a CMA out there. Uh, I've given you a script also. Uh, that's a part of, if you guys don't want to do this in terms of video, because this will help you get video. I, I know a lot of people kind of 
uh, cringe at seeing themselves, myself included, when they see themselves on video. So this doesn't require you to be on video, but this requires your your uh, homeowners to be on on video if if you so choose. Uh, same thing, investment questions and then testimonials. It pretty much just wraps up with them feeling good. How do you feel about your current? Uh, excuse me. Uh, uh, how did I help you in the home buying process? Easier and more enjoyable for you. Uh, a lot of times there's there's experience and a lot of uh, a lot of history offline. And you guys do a fantastic job professionally, but then when you go online, a lot of that doesn't reflect. So a lot of these millennial buyers, they don't look at experience in, in the neighborhoods and experience with their mom and dad. They think Google and, and Yelp and Facebook and Instagram is the legitimacy. They think that's credibility. So a, a lot of times people have the experience. Some of you might be in that, in that boat and you go online and you perhaps don't even exist. You don't have a website. Your social media doesn't even reflect that you're in the real estate industry. Uh, so those things are extremely important. So I got you guys the script, uh, all of these bonuses. I'm not sure how much time we have. All these bonuses I'm giving to you guys absolutely for free. I didn't get a chance to dress them up in terms of the ebooks, like the uh, the home seller ebook, the real estate. So um, let's see. Part well, I think this is super helpful for even call it old fashioned marketing. You know, if you want to do a weekly update or a weekly newsletter or a monthly newsletter, you can literally, and that's always, you know, something that holds us back is, uh, you know, I got to curate content or I need to write this whole thing out. You know, I don't want to copy and paste from Google. And that's where this is a little different. It's, you know, traditionally, for the past couple of decades, we go to Google, we ask a question and we find relevant websites that we have to go then further research. Whereas you're kind of in a sense doing the same thing with chat GTP, but you're, you're giving it a prompt to take an action and create something for you. So it's going to curate the content for you and put it into, you know, pretty well written. I mean, it's, it's pretty amazing, you know, that it, it writes it like a human would write it for the most part. And you can even adjust that with how you, you prompt it. But if you're trying to, you know, it saves your chat. So if you have one going for, you know, monthly newsletter, weekly newsletter or something, you can put in, you know, what happened in the mortgage market and how are, you know, um, you know, what's appreciation looking like in a certain city or things like that. Um, that's, I think some of the really cool stuff with how this is kind of shaping up, you know? Yeah, exactly. And the whole point of this is guys, this, this is basically the bait and, and ladies, this is basically the bait that you're throwing out out there. The reason why I wanted to give you a bunch of eBooks and webinars, we'll, we'll quickly jump to the webinar. There isn't a reason to go back and read, or there isn't an excuse to not go back to your database because I, I gave it to you. I, I gave you ebooks, I gave you scripts, and I'm gonna give you a webinar. What what I would suggest is go back to your database and say, hey, look, I'm create I created this ebook, but one of the things that we're gonna do is identify where they're at in the phase of home ownership. But go back with the ebook and say, hey, look, I see you're an empty nester. I just wrote this ebook. Can you can you give me some feedback on if this is kind of accurate or how I can improve this? The whole point, the whole point is opening that conversation so we can see what the, the real estate uh, overall goals are, what their life goals are, and how real estate applies to that. So real quickly, I just want to also look, we're starting from scratch right here. So I just want to show you this is gamma.app. This is for a webinar. So we're doing this in real time. I'm going to I'm going to do this in real time so you guys can see how quickly and easily this is. The thing that this is not going to do for you, hopefully it works. The thing this is not going to do for you is not going to present it to anyone. So it'll it'll do all the work. It'll do absolutely everything. It'll give you the slides. You just pick out create workspace. It's this easy. So this is the one that I was actually uh, telling Travis, I'm like, hey, you got it. Because, oh, so here, here's what was, uh, I think last week, I'm just going to put uh, education, we'll put social media. So last week, um, Travis was talking about the uh, 
the home buyer presentation. I'm like, Travis, what's going on? What's up with this home buyer presentation? Can you send it to me? He's like, yeah, I sent it to you already. So this presentation and I was waiting. He said like, yeah, I sent it to you. Uh, so try a topic. Let's do first time home buyers. First time home buyers. And he said he sent it and then, and then I, it dawned on me like, what am I doing? We got chat GPT like at our fingertips. And I'm like, I just typed in a bunch of stuff and I was like, holy crap. And then I discovered this one. So look, this brings up the slides. Watch this. I'm pressing continue. Let me pick out my, let's, let's go. It doesn't matter. We'll go pink atmosphere. Boom. That those are the buttons that I'm pressing. You could do the same thing, whether it's mortgage, real estate, retirement, it doesn't matter. Reverse mortgage. Now you're going to, you have the ability to, to revise and edit all of the slides. You can change the formatting. You can change the pictures or you can run with it. The point is like Travis was saying, this just helps facilitate the content. There isn't any more excuse to not be in front of our clients. Remember, we're going back to the $50,000. If every single client is worth $50,000, you owe it to them and to yourself and your family to stay in contact with them. These tools give you that bridge to do that. So as you can see, it's almost done. It's hitting the, the end and oops. Making Zoom some tends to slow things down too. Oh, we're experiencing a heavy load. Things might be a bit slow right now. I don't want that one. So yeah, this will basically give you your whole presentation. Now, my question is, what can you do with this? So if you wanted, and, and right now, my biggest concern was, I didn't want to hit you guys with paid, where I really dwell at is paid ads. I like to pay to play because the it's easier to, to have people raise their hand who are currently interested. However, if you guys are not looking to spend money and be resourceful and use what we have currently with ChatGPT and some of these webinars, uh, all you have to do is start giving you know weekly webinars or monthly webinars. Uh, that's for free. It doesn't cost anything. Uh, you just have to go back and and contact your your past database. My question is to some of you, you know, how are you keeping track of your past clients? Is it through a spreadsheet? Is it through a CRM? I know I know Travis uses uh, Sierra. Looks like we're experiencing a heavy load. Oh, here we go. Something's coming up. And you guys seen how many buttons I click? Boom, it's done. Importance of home ownership, setting a budget, finding the, real, the right real estate agent, home buying process, financing options, pitfalls to avoid, closing the deal. You wanna add slides? You want to change anything? You don't like the way this is? You could basically just change it right here with the layout options. I mean, you want to have a timetable? I mean, it's it's that easy. So, yep. yeah, there. So basically, I I can give this to you as well. You've seen how fast that was. We did it in real time, and and I will I just also made a full presentation for for first time home buyers. So if you wanted a slideshow. Now there's a slideshow and that took probably a minute and a half. <laughs> so you, Yeah. And, and that's what I was texting you too. Like, yeah. I just pushed this button and this button. I was like, wow. Yeah. So, so last, lastly, I just wanted to finish up with uh, just a marketing challenge for you guys. You have $50,000 per each person in your database. First thing, decide which phase that your past customers are in. So when we look, uh, I don't think I have that in here, but in this in this cheat sheet, uh, I think it's over here. One of the bonuses, excuse me, one of the bonuses, it's going to tell you what phase. It's not rocket science. They're either in retirement, empty nesters. Uh, they're looking to move up. Not sure if you guys can still see my screen on the slides. The slides, no, we're on Google. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. Yeah, so just just look at your past clients. It doesn't matter if you haven't talked to them in a while. These are the hottest, warmest leads you have. Go back to each one of your past clients and see where they're at. Are they looking to retire soon? Are they looking to upgrade? All of those things, just, just look at each one, see where they are. Reach out to each one, reignite the relationship. Hit them with one of the scripts, one of the lead magnets or webinars. Ask for their feedback. Give them a CMA. Tell them how much equity they have in their home. 
give them information, but you have to you have to talk to them. So I wanted to challenge everybody. And next week, uh, if you guys want to report on this, uh, we're we would like to see talk time. So a friend of mine, Randy, is in the the Glutch group, John Glutch. He's done about uh, 700 units last year in three different locations, uh, three different teams, Las Vegas, Arizona, and San Diego. And one of the things he talks about is a stopwatch challenge. So the only thing that matters is how much time you've actually had with a client, which is surprisingly low. So next week, if you guys want to report in or see if there's any CMAs, my whole point is just to us bring in revenue. The whole point is gain, gain commission for you and your family. So whoever wins, I decided just to throw that out there for myself to you guys. Uh, I will buy you guys a Starbucks. I know it's not much and you might be some some big ballers here, but just to make it fun. I mean, there's nothing, there's no harm, no foul. At the very least, you could potentially get some movement in terms of selling a home. Uh, I don't, this is the only thing missing out that I haven't covered is your why. Why is this important? I mean, are you look is is are your kids going to college or you looking to put some investment away? This would be an important thing, and I just gave you guys some playbooks as well as tools that you can use right now to jump back to your uh, to your database. So if you guys want a coffee, let's see let's see who the winner is. So yeah, uh, where where are they going to find the ebook? Should we throw them uh, in the uh, recording in the um, Facebook group? Uh, I do not know the, I have the bare bones. So like, for instance, this is the first time home buyer. Oh, this is the script, but, uh, I have the information. So this is the home seller script. Uh, it's bare bones. There's no, it doesn't look pretty. Uh, it okay. just needs some, uh, oh yeah. And I forgot at the bottom, I also created some, excuse me, chat GPT created, <laughs> <laughs> it created some headlines. See, you start thinking you're doing this when it's really, it's really the machine. Yeah. So it created some headlines for you guys. Uh, clickbait, the shocking truth about real estate investing. So you can choose a headline, slap it on top uh, and just pretty it up. Make, you know, throw on your colors, your logo, whatever. But I, I can give this to, to Travis. And now this is part of the brokerage's assets. So Anybody that comes in, you could be like, "Look, here's some here's some webinars, here's some eBooks. Go get them." Awesome. So it's white labeled. <laughs> exactly. Yep. Yep. <laughs> cool. Well, I appreciate it. Hopefully, you guys see you know some value in it. Um, basically, the the excuse of I don't know what to create or anything is kind of uh, no longer valid with all this AI out there. I mean. It's just so easy to come up with a topic and talk about it for even just a couple of minutes. If you're doing Instagram, if you're doing TikToks or you want to go and do blog content or anything like that. I mean, there's so many different ways you can present it and that's really up to you. But getting the information together now literally takes less than a minute in most cases to generate something pretty high quality that you can just, you know, have in front of you and talk about or present it another way. So um, this really is, you know, making things much easier for us as real estate agents to put out the narrative that we want. I've talked about that a lot, you know, about, you know, who is your ideal client? What, what do you like to work with? Is it, is it first time buyers? Is it investors? You know, do you want to sell multiplex? What is it? And you can actually go into these programs now and start creating actual content and putting it out there to attract more of those kinds of clients that you want to work with. So um, it's a great way to really design, you know, um, who you want to be working with. So that's that's all we have for today. Um, we should do a follow up session, maybe get into more presentations or something like that. But um that was really informative. Hopefully everybody liked it. And yeah, they were asking uh, recording uh, in the back office. It's a gamma dot app, G A M M A, G A double M A dot app. It's for free, guys. I yeah. would I would take advantage of it. Yep. Awesome. Well, I really appreciate you coming on and that was a great presentation. And um we'll obviously be in touch because you know we talk often. So but um okay. <laughs> Um, we'll see you later. Thanks for, thanks for coming on. Hopefully everybody enjoyed it. Thanks guys. Okay. We'll see ya.